inside my head When all I was scared of hit underneath my bed When truth was seen in me The power to pass we turned me to shame To try our work To be a delight to my time He will always walk in his way And I will be happy on earth And in my home above Oh, the lead, yes, that's right. right. That's and right. I kind of wonder sometimes if that wasn't part of their problem. You know, they had yeah. so much sickness and so much, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so many problems. But, so, but that's what they did use. Well, we're glad you're here because tonight we planned a celebration feast complete with music, dance, and just plain fun. So sit back and enjoy Sunset by the Mississippi. We 
Pedro's blood be revealed to use his spicy eggs to murder his wealthy grandmother and inherit the family collection of jewel encrusted sombreros? <laughs> Will Juan Jose Fernando Jesus Rodrigo de la Mocha Rodriguez Fernandez del Common Contreras Gonzalez de Guadalupe ever find out that his real name is Bab Jones? <laughs> and that his mustache is fake? <laughs> Will the doctor discover that the guitarist is really his long lost son? Hey! <laughs> Oh, this and more on next week's episode of Donde Este El Baño, only on Navu Amundo. Lock your arms in with the roughest man that you can see of the guards. They won't harm us if we're locked arm in arm with the roughest guards. And so they did. Because Joseph really believed that at any time they would be killed. You know, he knew that was going to happen. And something else that I learned while being here was that Joseph really did want to live. He wanted to be a father to his family and a husband to his wife. And he wanted to be with the saints. And he did everything he could have other than fight to try to save their lives. And I just, to me, that just lets me know who Joseph was. That he didn't just do this all willingly. He wanted to live. But he knew at the end he had to do this. Those other men are sent on errands. The errands are very important to get attorneys and witnesses and information back, even letters to Emma. All of those things were very important. In those days, when they'd send somebody out, but so they couldn't just post a letter and expect it, because they had to hand deliver it, hand carry it. And I can guarantee the mob will not pass the letter on. And so once they were left, they were not allowed to come back. Those that were commissioned with some kind of a mission or, a, or to do something. Well, that's why that number diminishes from the first day from 10 down to down to eight seven. or seven thanks seven thank you very much i just forgot haven't i down to seven and then eventually just to four and that's why that number diminishes but here in this room the martyrdom has taken place willard richards who is given a prophecy by joseph joseph smith about a year before and that prophecy is this that willard would see his friends fall on the right and on the left the balls or meaning bullets were like hail everywhere and that he would be in such a dire condition which is exactly what happens next door and not one bullet a ball or bullet would penetrate his clothing it's an amazing prophecy literally fulfilled because you see only a little nick of a bullet that hit his left lower earlobe that a band-aid probably would have taken care of and that was his only injury now it's amazing in such a small room that that much violence is going on. They say over a, over 100 bullets were fired into that room from the outside and from the inside in. It, it was all, it was just a terrific, terrible, terrible scene. Well, when Willard's, after Joseph falls from the window, the mob that's there rushes down the stairs to go by the well to see what they had done, leaving Willard, the only one standing. And I wondered about that, but those days, those old guns had lots of smoke those black powder guns. And if you had that much powders going off in the room, you probably couldn't see either. But uh, that's how I overcame that. I questioned, how, how could he stand? I don't question that, that it couldn't happen. I just questioned how, I like to see practical sides to things too. Well, Willard goes over to the window and looks out the window and sees that Joseph is on the ground and he's, he says he's dead. Now he thinks, Willard does, that the mob will come back, and if they come back, he will be killed as well. 
he's on his way to this room, just barely getting out of that, starting to get out of the room when John Taylor had been shot four times and under the bed in that next room, whispers, take me with you. And then just a, then Willard knows that John Taylor's still alive. He does bring him into this room. He puts him on some straw like you see there and puts an old mattress over the top of him. And he tells Willard, you have to survive to tell what happened here so that others can know. Willard still thinks that he might be killed. If the mob discovers him, they will be killed. Well, now that's the story. Well, the mob does come back, but only for a few minutes, for a few seconds, really. And they, they don't come into this room and they don't discover Willard or John Taylor because they come up to the murder room when someone outside yells, the Mormons are coming. And instantly they're afraid. Why? Maybe it's a, a, a novel legion. Maybe it's a, a guilt that they just committed such a terrible crime, killing a prophet. I don't know what the real reasons were, but they immediately left without looking into this room. And they even left the, the city of Carthage, Mayo. So that, that ends the violence. So that's, uh, is there anything you'd like to add? Okay, let's go into the next room if we want to. Well, it was about midnight. There were seven men in this room, and it was nine, and it was time to go to bed. So Joseph and Hiram took the bed. Willard Richard Ritter sat here at the desk, and he was the church scribe as well as the personal secretary to Joseph. And so he was writing till his candle burned out. The other four men were on the floor. There was Dan Jones, John Fulmer, Stephen Markham, and uh, John Taylor. About midnight, there was a shot heard outside, and it woke Joseph up. And he gets out of bed, and he paces the floor for a few moments, and then he lays down between Dan Jones and John Fulmer. And he turns to Dan Jones, and he says, Dan, are you afraid to die? And Dan, and he was this little five-foot Welch man. He was a very feisty man. He fought for what he believed, and he said to Joseph, do you think it be that time? In such a cause as this, no, death gives me no terror. Then Joseph actually gives his last prophecy, and he tells Dan Jones that he will live. He will serve a mission in Wales. Well, in October of this very same year, Dan does serve a mission in Wales, and he baptizes thousands, even as many as close to six, thousand people. So he was a great missionary as well as a wonderful man. Then Joseph turns over to John Fulmer, and they engage in a little conversation. And um, Joseph puts his arm out and he says, John, lay your head on my arm for a pillow. Well, this tells me that Joseph was a very compassionate man. Even when he was knew what was happening here, he knew he wouldn't see his family. He had many things on his mind. His thought was for someone else's comfort. They did engage in a little conversation, and Joseph did say to John Fulmer, he said, I'd give anything if I could just see my family one more time. And then he said, if I could just preach to the saints, well, they had been in this kind of a situation. I'm going to use the, the number 40 times, probably more than that. They had been imprisoned and, you know, persecuted in so many ways. And they always went home. Joseph knew this time he would not, but John didn't. And so John says to Joseph, Oh, Brother Joseph, you'll have many more opportunities to preach to you, the saints and to see your family. And then Joseph just thanks him for trying to boost his spirits, and they do go to sleep. And then in the morning when they awake, and Joseph does send those three men out on errands. Then Jones, he did send out to find out what the ruckus was the night before and what, why the shot was fired. And when he found that out, he was to go find Governor Ford and try to get help. And the other two went out, as Grandpa said, as they came back to the jail after their errands were completed, they were not allowed to re-enter. So then when the, the mob breaks in and heads up the door, there's just those four men. Thank you. It's not like reading about it in the book. It's thinking about it, even seeing a picture. You're here. You're now part of it. And I want you to know, all the times we both come, 
I just speak to myself each time, every time, I feel, I know it, in a more deeper, more meaningful way than ever before. So Joseph, Joseph Smith, and Hiram, his brother, were true men of God, even prophets. I want you to know that from the deepest part of my heart. I know it. It's a, a very special place when you can actually be in the very room where this occurred. I bear you that witness. I read it not long before we left Carthage that about how you know millions and millions of people visit Calvary to pay homage to our Savior Jesus Christ, and that this jail has become the same for Joseph Smith. And you consider it's 170 years old, and last summer there were 65,000 or so that visited here. The saying is for Joseph, that he is being remembered, and I think that is so, so neat.
I've had the privilege to serve with the Four Lockers for two summers and they are just so wonderful. Um, one of my favorite moments with them has always been in Carthage and just getting to know them and living by them and um, I'll never forget that first night we got to Carthage and Sister Horlocker hula hooped and her little workout hula hoop and Elder Horlocker just loved it and just was so excited that we were there. Um, and especially Elder Horlocker, he has just such a strong testimony of the restoration and that's something that I've always appreciated and just um, him giving our, us our tour, our example tour in Carthage so that we could learn from him and just his knowledge and um, just how he knows to be true that um, the Savior really was with the Prophet Joseph Smith when he died. And then Sister Horlocker, her courage um, and her love and her kindness that she shows to everyone um, and I'm just so grateful for them and for their example and for um, them always just welcoming us young sisters into their life and into their family and um, they'll just always be um, people that are special in my heart and so I'm so grateful for them and I'm so privileged to have gotten to serve with them and to have them in my life. So, love you! <laughs> well, Elder and Sister Horlacher, we definitely love you. We got to work with you in Carthage and we know how special you are and you've been in our cast and Thanks for being the great, wonderful people you are and wonderful missionary, Sister Price. This video because I love both Elder and Sister Harlocker. They have been so kind and have led with love the whole time they've been here. The best part about them is the happiness that is always around them. They love happy and they bring more joy to people than anyone I know. And this is Sister Hansen from Alberta, Canada. Hi Elder and Sister Horlocker. I am so glad I got to serve with you because I think you two are so amazing and we will really miss you when you go home so I think you should just extend and stay with us. <laughs> Love you. Hey, hey, the greatest people in the world, my fairy godmother and the greatest papa, Elder Horlocker. And you guys are the most wonderful people in the world and I'm here with your great, 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 no not great, your grandchildren and your kids. And we're having a great time at the Loom, and they're awesome. I just love them all. And I can't wait to come down to southern Utah and barge in and give you guys a hug. See you at the end of, your, of my mission. <laughs> I just love them. I am so excited to meet you. Go ahead. All right. Well, welcome home, Horlockers. We know you're having fun with your family, but we're missing you living upstairs. We hope we can eat Mexican food with you again when we come to St. George. And we miss you coming and going and coming and going and coming and going. <laughs> we notice you always leave before us when it's time for meetings. You're always on time. <laughs> Have a good rest of your life. Love you guys and we'll see you in Glendale and St. George. Elder and Sister Horlocker, I love you so much. I'm so happy for this opportunity that we had to serve with you. We love you so much and thank you for all that you've done. You're so great and you just have such a great testimony of the Savior. And we're really grateful that we got to hear that. We love you. Bye. Dear Elder and Sister Horlocker, you have a beautiful family. We're so privileged to see them. And this is my opportunity to tell them and you how wonderful you are and how much we love you. What a wonderful people you are. How awesome you are. And I couldn't help but tell them how your uh, white Dodge Ram was always in the parking lot before anybody else, no matter if you had to travel from, Mar from Carthage or not, you always were the first one in the parking lot. The first in everything and you're just great missionaries. You guys are just wonderful and we love you to pieces. Okay, I love the Horlockers. This is Elder McCoy. They are some of the sweetest people on the whole mission and have a great sense of humor. Okay, I love Elder and Sister Horlocker and I think that they are the most kind-hearted and wonderful people that I've ever met. And um, I feel really privileged to have served with them. And they're just the most Christ-like, amazing people that I know. And I love them. <laughs> Hello, Horlockers. We love you. So grateful to have served with you. It's been so fun to work in the brickyard with you and all over the mission. You've been a wonderful example. We love you. Elder and Sister Horlocker, it's been a pleasure to work with you. We miss you out here in Carthage. But you've done a great job and we enjoyed your visits and your, your lessons and the teaching in our district meetings. 
enjoyed all of it. Sorry to see you go. Thanks. Hi, you wonderful people. We're going to be so sad when you leave. Love you and take care. Elder and Sister Horlogger, we're sure going to miss you here in Nauvoo and Carthage. It was a pleasure to serve with you in the historic Carthage jail. And we'll come and see you. So good luck and we'll see you in the St. George area probably in October or November. Good luck. Hi, Elder and Sister Horlocker. We do love you. It's been so much fun and such a pleasure to work with you and we've learned so much from you. You've really been a great asset to this mission and will be to whatever you're doing the rest of your life. Thanks so much. All right, Horlockers. You know you're some of my favorite people. How I love you. I've loved playing for you, seeing, just enjoyable. It's so great. You're some of my eternal family. Hi! I'm sorry my husband isn't here to say hello to you also. Maybe you'll see them in a minute, but we do think you two are the wonderful, wonderful people. We really enjoyed you out there in Carthage a lot. Elder and Sister Hardocker, you know how dearly we love you too. And we got connected before we even started our missions because of our kids that know each other and our grandchildren that, that run together and play, play ball together. But anyway, don't forget us. We're coming down to visit us. Remember that. Hey. Hi, Horlockers. Uh, I just want to tell you that we love you guys. We're glad to meet your granddaughter and have her here in the Heber C. Kimball home. So we'll see you when we get home. I plan to come and see you. So love you guys. Bye-bye. We love you guys, and we are so grateful for all that you have done to, to teach us what being a true missionary is really about. We just want you to know how much we appreciate everything that you've done for us. And we know it's going to be wonderful when you return home and, and can share all of the, the good things that you've learned here, too. So, love you.